Hey everyone, today I want to show you how to create this effect using Nanomesh, the Chiss modifier, booleans and apply to similar. Before we start, I want to inform you about my free beginner hard surface course for ZBrush. In this course, I will guide you through the ZBrush UI and introduce you to the main tools we are going to use. We'll start with a warm-up exercise to practice the necessary workflows and then we dive right into creating a VR headset step by step. So if you're just starting out or want to have a more detailed explanation of my workflows, this course is perfect for you. You can access the course through the link in the description. Let's start by a simple sphere. Duplicate it, go to our gizmo, click the E gear icon and then choose sphere 3D. Go into solo mode rotate and the cool thing about choosing your primitives over the gizmo is when you press w you are, get these cones where you can adjust the resolution of your mesh and do further adjustments so i don't need the top and the bottom for my setup for nano mesh but something like that looks fine just going to delete the top and bottom and scale this up to fit the sphere. Okay, and to make this a bit more interesting, I go to twist and twist this by 180 degrees. Now to create an anime mesh brush, what you have to do is choose any insert mesh brush. I'm going to choose the IMM primitives. And then go over to brush, create, and then choose create a nano mesh brush. That will basically create a C modeler brush from your insert mesh brush with insert nano mesh activated. So now we can drag this object up on a poly. And I would choose poly group all. And now I can drag this up like so. Let's go to nano mesh. Reset the set orientation and put in 90 on the X rotation. Now I can apply by hitting one to mesh. And I can also delete the setup mesh. Okay, so let's activate live boolean, bring back our sphere and activate subtraction as well as dynamic and duplicate these pieces. And now let's make those caps a little bit more interesting. And in order to do that, the feature I'm going to use is Apply to Similar. You can find Apply to Similar under Tools and then Geometry, Repeat to Similar Parts. And so the way this works is if you have a bunch of um, similar objects in one sub tool that are basically copies from each other, you can adjust one of them and after that hit apply to similar and the rest will adjust accordingly. But before you have do these changes, you need to control click in the history. So you have this kind of reference point. So I'm just going to grab this piece and center my gizmo, control clicking to mask everything, bring everything back and invert my mask. Now I can kind of scale this inwards. With the gizmo activated, I can all click on a vertice and drag to another vertice to kind of align my gizmo. And now I can move this along their normals. Cool, and when I'm happy, I can press apply to similar. Okay, to create a little bit more interest, let's create some ring lights around those capsules. Control click in history again, switch to the C modeler brush, and then bring in another edge loop here, switch to bevel, and let's bevel that edge loop, switch back to extrude and polygroup all, and let's extrude that inwards, as well as painting in a new polygroup here by pressing down ALT 
with the C modeler activated and extruding that inwards. Let's hit apply to similar. Now I'm going to duplicate that sub tool. And now I want to isolate those rings. So the problem is now we are sharing this body group. So the only thing I have to do for that to solve now is clicking in the history again, selecting this poly loop, giving this a new poly group, and then apply to similar. And now I have this isolated, I can delete hidden and give this some um, dynamic subdivision. Something like that. Let's give this a nice bright orange color and a bright material like so. And let's switch back to this one. And what I want to do now is add another cylinder right here. So I'm going back to my C modeler brush, click in the history. Insert an edge loop here. Painting in this new poly group and then extrude this outwards. Mask this portion and scale this in. Something like that, and let's give this some supporting edge loops. Multiple edge loops and keep polygroup. Now I'm going to hit group by normals, then increase polygroup, apply similar, and let's go to dynamic subdivision and adjust our crease level. Okay, two looks fine. And there we go. This is how you can create this effect. So if you want more insights of my workflows or want to get a better understanding of ZBrush, Look at my free beginner hard surface course, which I designed to be easy to follow as a beginner. You can find the link in the description. Until then guys, take care.